The fourth anomaly relates to Rashi's commentary to the information contained in Bamidbar 21.8, the pasuk that contains the instructions given to Moshe Rabbeinu, in which Moshe is told to Asei Lecha Saraf, make for yourself a replica of a Saraf, a snake, Vesimoto al Nes, and place that replica upon a Nes, which Rashi defines as a Klonas, on a pole which they call a perka in Old French. Rashi then proceeds to provide three examples where the word nes is used, all three from Sefer Yeshayahu, and then goes on to explain that lafi shuhu gavoha, because it is tall, laot, it can function as a sign, velir iya, and an indicator, korin nes, it is referred to as a nes, a word that is also used for miracle or sign. In his second commentary to this pasuk, Rashi focuses upon the statement that kol hanashuch, anybody who had been bitten, the ra'a oto, will look at it, the saraf attached to the nes, v'chai, and live. And here, Rashi appears to address the nuanced changes between the instructions given to Moshe by God and the implementation by Moshe Rabbeinu of those instructions, for which there are two. The wording in Pasuk 8 is that kol hanashuch, anybody who had been bitten, supposedly by the snakes mentioned earlier, would look at it, the saraf attached to the nes, v'chai and live. The wording in Pasuk 9, however, is more specific, where Moshe says, im noshach hanachash et ish, any person who had been bitten by the nachash, Vihibit el nachash hanachoshet would look at the copper snake v'chai and live. The second nuanced distinction between pasuk eight and pasuk nine is the use of two different verbs to describe how one was to be healed from an attack. In pasuk eight, the wording is v'raa oto. In pasuk nine, the wording is vihibit el nachash hanachoshet. Both words imply the act of looking at, but whereas Reish Aleph Hay describes the physical act of seeing something, the Nun Bet Tet Shoresh implies the act of gazing with concentration and kavana. Then in his second commentary to Pasuk 8, Rashi makes a distinction between the two Pasukim. In that Pasuk 8 would suggest that the healing powers of the Saraf attached to the Ness extended to anybody who had been bitten and was still suffering from all kinds of attacks. Kol Hanashuch. Whereas in Pasuk 9, we are dealing with somebody who had been attacked specifically by the horde of snakes that had suddenly come upon the camp. An attack by a poisonous snake can result in death within a short period of time. A bite from an animal generally does not result in death. There could be infection due to rabies or broken bones. And therefore, on account of the severity of the snake bite, the reliance on spiritual intercession to avert death required a greater degree of kavana, concentration, reflected in the use of the word vehibit, whereas the spiritual intervention to heal other kinds of bites did not require this degree of concentration, hence the use of the word vera'a. In the words of Rashi, commenting on the text kol hanashuch afilu kelev o chamor noshcho the healing powers extended even to a bite from a dog or from a donkey haya nizok in which there was a potential for the individual to suffer harm umit navetne the whole gradually deteriorating to the point of death ella whereas shinishichat hanachash the bite of a snake memaheret lahamit brings upon a quick death Ulukach, and therefore, Rashi goes on to explain the second nuance. Nemar kan oto. In Pasuk 8, the wording is vera'a oto, merely looking at it, the saraf upon the pole, ria ba'alma, a quick look, while ubenushichas hanachash nemar vehibit. With respect to the snake bite, there needed to be vehibit which will lead us into the fourth of the four questions that the Rebbe raises with, with respect to Rashi's commentary to Pasuk 9.